Guys, what's up? This is McAllister's podcast. I'm your host, always called McAllister. Um, we got a guest episode today, Jason Bennell, returning, uh, which is crazy because we haven't had a guest episode in a while. So this is brand new. This is exciting. Um, but I just wanted to talk about one quick thing before we get into that. A little bit of Noah housekeeping from last week's episode. Um, toward the end of the episode, I kind of talked a little bit about the Iowa Podcast Awards. And I think in that rant... I maybe came off as, you know, like sh- like I was shitting on the organization, like I was shitting on um, that event, and I wasn't trying to do that. I wasn't trying to disparage anyone who's participating in that event or is hosting that event. Um, that was not my intention at all. Um, I was, I think, I was merely poking fun at the art, this quote unquote art of podcasting. That a lot of people kind of proponent and, you know, just kind of the award system in general. I think those were kind of the things that I was. And as people know, you know, the show is satirical. The show is, um, you know, meant to be offensive. Right. But I think there are even times in that that I realize I fuck up and that's this is one of those times. So I just wanted to kind of make that note and kind of let everybody know, you know, I think it's great that people are getting together in the state. And coming together as one in the form of podcasting, I think that's a net positive. And uh, I I don't want to, you know, I I hope I didn't ruffle any feathers, too many feathers at least, Um, more than necessary. I like ruffling a few, but you know what I mean. Anyways, so sorry about that to everyone, but um, I just wanted to make that note. So um, without further ado, here's the episode. Ladies and gentlemen, what's up? This is McAllister's podcast. I'm your host, always Cole McAllister. Um, got guest episode today, which is not something we've done in a while, but um, we're here with a returning guest, Jason Bennell, um, from the Iowa Atheists and Free, Thir- Free Thinkers Association. Or is it an association? Or? Just Iowa Atheists and Free Thinkers, <laughs> <Okay>. yeah. <laughs> Don't know um, what you mean. <laughs> but uh, we've had you on before, and uh, I have a lot of respect for you. I'm really glad that you're here. So uh, thank you for coming through, man. Uh, how are you doing today? I'm doing all right. Uh, thanks for having me back on. Um, it's good to be on uh, local media again. Yeah, <laughs> so, for sure, man. Thanks for having me back. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Well, you know, that's what we try to do here. You know, we really we want to keep it honed in. We want to keep it local. Um, and that's why we have you on, man. I sure. appreciate that. Yeah. yeah. You look good. You look good. I feel like I've gained all the weight that you've lost <laughs> since the last well, time you've been on. Well, uh, I did uh, when I ran for city council, just walking and knocking the doors, just doing that. I lost like 20 pounds. I'm not wow. even kidding. Just doing that was good for my health. So maybe I'll just do it again as a weight loss. <laughs> <plan>. <laughs> that's that's the encouragement for people to do that, right? The weight loss. The weight loss. The exercise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the mental and physical exercise. That goes hey, well, into- hey, <laughs> both. You get both. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> Hell yeah. Um, So the reason why I thought I'd have you on, well, part of the reason, um, I know I had a clip like probably five months ago where I kind of talked about my experience um, kind of being in different um, atheist groups online, et cetera, and kind of, um, you know, talking about some of the, uh, and we kind of talked about this, I mean, we talked about it in private, but we also kind of talked about it um, on the last episode, kind of the... What I view is can be kind of a political blindness when it comes to, um, I mean, either side of the spectrum, really. Um, and I know you kind of had some things that you wanted to comment on for that. Um, I don't know if that's still something that's fresh in your mind or not, but um, yeah, man. Uh, um, I mean, it's not super fresh because uh, yeah, five sure, months ago yeah. was when the election, so <laughs> yeah. there's a lot of stuff happening. Yeah. Um, but to your point on political blindness, I mean, yeah, sure. I, I mean, if you do, if you never interact with someone who disagrees with you, whether it be on religion or politics or something like that, then you can't grow. Yes, you know, you you can't grow, yes. you can't understand where you are in you know in the, in this uh, not in the spectrum, but like on the political spectrum. Um, so having that dialogue is important, not just for you know community building, sure. but also so that you can better understand your own beliefs. Um, Agreed. I, I, one one example I, I tell my kids and I share is uh, in my philosophy class. Uh, he he said, and I always this sticks with me is ideas are like balloons, and if your balloon is easily popped, then it should be. And then mm-hmm. you should build it out of stronger stuff, and then it can't be popped quite so le- easily. And if you have all your balloons around you that are your ideas, and they can't be easily popped, then you're probably doing pretty good. And if they're easily popped and you can't handle it, 
well, maybe you have some searching to do. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Uh, there's a. I'm not a huge fan of him, but I've listened to some of his stuff. Uh, Destiny. I don't know mm-hmm. if you're familiar with him, the streamer. Somewhat. Yeah, uh, yeah he's Somewhat, a little iffy. Yeah. He's a little iffy. <laughs> uh, but one thing that I do. I, maybe it's not true, but one thing that he at least professes is that uh, he does really try to understand the other side. Mm. And I think, like, even as someone like Atheist, who, you know, asking us if God's real is like asking if Harry Potter's real, right? Like, it's hard for an Atheist to kind of put yourself in that shoes. But, I mean, I think to even attempt and to try, I think that's something that everyone should do. You know, sure. um, yeah, I, I even tell religious people, like, you know, it, it, just go through the mental exercise. Like, question it. At least question mm-hmm. it. At least start with the question. And even at the, if at the end of the day, in my opinion, even if, it, if at the end of the day you still have that religious belief, I'm going to have more respect for that person than sure. the person who has just blindly. Sure. And it goes both ways, as you said earlier. Yes. You know, if an atheist is like, oh, God's not real, therefore any discussion about God or any reference to God is automatically silly disqualifying. Well, congratulations, you just disqualified like 60% of the population yeah, exactly. of having any discussion, you know, so you can't do that. But um, to you, to as what you say, if you discuss these things and, and entertain them and engage with them, then you'll come out the better uh, on the other side better because you'll have a better understanding of not only your own beliefs, but the beliefs of others. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And, you know, I, I think I told you this in private, too, but I'm um, going back to the clip. Um, you know, so a fault of mine, I think, with the clip is I think <laughs> I think, you know, I, I was in a, an emotional heated moment mm. uh, being online, be, you know, as someone who's an atheist who, you know, truly does have the you know the not the belief but the the understanding that there's no god right mm-hmm. so to go into a group and try to find acceptance and to just be kind of thrown out it can be kind of a you know that even if it's an online group that can sure. be um you know it, it can affect your how you feel about yourself etc 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 um so i think i was a little emotionally charged oh, okay. when i was kind of making those clips um and you know i recently read a book um it's in our motorcycle maintenance I don't know if you, Zen in the art I've of heard mortal. of that. Yes, I have not read it, but I've heard of that. It's I've heard good. of it. Yeah, it's spoken highly of. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that book kind of just talks about kind of, kind of just rethinking things in a sense. Mm-hmm. I guess kind of my journey over the last few months has been, um, I guess, not going into the group think of it, like really trying to remove myself from the group think. Like mm-hmm. one of the, I remember when I was kind of debating people in that group. One of the things I really liked was someone said, "You know, there are atheists who are." nazis and you know whatever mm-hmm. right like the, the, the atheism itself isn't like the the defining factor necessarily it's more of like an attribute sure in a sense sure um, do you know I, what i'm saying y- yeah I, I mean there was uh, an event at uh, drake actually recently called like rose to religion and it was a room okay. full of just different religious groups and the atheists were there as well as the humanists oh, nice. and a lot of folks would say you know oh you're atheist so you must mean x y and z and i'm like well not really atheist is simply a not theist belief in god that's it 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 really doesn't tell you anything else about yourself or what you may or may not believe other than you don't believe in a theist god yes so to for an atheist group or individual to say oh since you're an atheist you must do this well not not really there's nothing else that follows yeah and i again i think this is where discussion kind of comes in and you know that was i will say one of the really frustrating things about the facebook and i think that has I will say, I think this has more to do with the platform than the group oh, yeah. that's if on it. Was it Facebook, right? I mean, that's, yeah, that's always tough. Yeah, yeah. it's toxic. But um, the, the amount of discourse that seemed to be just kind of cut, you know, like that was really, and again, I think that's more the platform than anything because, you know, when you're like posting something in a group and then you got all these people responding to you, eventually you just got to kind of, you know, you got to weed the crazies out, you know, and just kind of, yeah. you know, um, so I don't know. I guess I guess uh, I guess I wanted to just pay that. <laughs> I wanted sure. to kind of yeah. pay your point a little homage. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I don't. Again, I don't know specifically what happened, but it's really easy in a Facebook group or online discourse, or whatever, or when you add anonymity <laughs> in particular. Yeah, yeah exactly. It, it just people feel like there's no consequence to what they say, you know. And one of the things I'm trying to build with Iowa atheists and free thinkers, and I think a lot of groups should do, is not that everything should have a consequence, but you know, when you're talking to somebody, that's a person, and it's a person who yes. you know probably lives nearby and works mm-hmm. nearby and is and has a family, so let's treat them as a person rather than just a, a nameless NPC that we can bash on Facebook because it's fun. That's not something that 
we're for we're for yeah. i agree i yeah. agree and you know i i almost kind of think this speaks to a, just a greater issue of group identity right sure. and group think um you know it, it it does have its benefits in some places but i think if you really just like if that is that if that's your whole personality if you're really going to look at somebody by whatever attribute and you know correlate whatever with that even, even if it's with good intention right mm -hmm. you're still kind of failing to that problem you're still kind of failing to that you know you shouldn't judge people by their skin color their sexual orientation or whatever obviously you should you should know who they are as a, you should find out who as they person. are as a person yeah. and judge them by that by their character, the content of the character, as yeah, they say. Yeah, you know? for sure. And I, I agree. And and I mean, and having, you know, with that, I think comes the flip side is you have to use sometimes heuristics when it comes to that, which or may not may or may not always be helpful or accurate, you know, to, to kind of shortcut into thinking, oh, well, they're black, therefore they like this. No, that's not how it works. <laughs> but it can be useful in other ways. Like if you come in here wearing Iowa State gear, like, okay, probably not a fan of the Hawkeyes. You, you, <laughs> yeah. know, like you can still take sure. some context clues and, and, sure. and make some decisions. Yeah. Sure. Exactly. Um, so one of the things I wanted to talk to you about having you in here. Um, so uh, again, I feel like this has gone personal <laughs> to oh, okay. me this whole episode. So that's my bad. That's, I haven't done these in a while. So, uh, so I personally, I've been going through a journey of, uh, um, recovery and porn addiction. Um, something for the last 15 months I've really I mean I've always had this problem but I really have kind of the last 15 months really kind of realized that really is a problem um, etc and uh, one of the things for me personally that I've been discovering through this journey is um, a lot of the negative aspects attributed that does have to do with um, you know me growing up in a religious household mm. um, you know specifically with the topic of sex like that was just something that wasn't talked about and I mean I'm sure a lot of people listening can relate, right? You have very religious parents. <clears throat> when it comes to sex, it's like, nope, sex is a no-go, so yeah. I'm just not going to talk about it, right? Um, and, you know, obviously, you're, you, you and your organization, you, you know, talk to a lot of different people. I'm kind of curious, do you have any, I guess, A, do you have any insight on that um, in terms of, like, an atheist maybe, you know, struggling with that themselves, and B, do you have any, do you have any per personal anecdotes, not even for you, but, like, for other people, um, who have similar experiences that maybe not even in that just in trauma in general with religion sure I, I don't know anybody who's approached me and saying they have porn addiction uh, so I, 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 I would have to say I'm not familiar with that specifically not very many people do but <laughs> saying, having said that um, that ta the taboo around sex sexuality absolutely that's yeah. that's for many people that is kind of the triggering event for them that causes them to break from whether it's their family or their church or their community is they're they're gay or yeah. they may think or they may think they're gay or bi or trans or whatever or you know they have an extramarital affair or whatever if it's around sex it's like a third rail you, mm -hmm. you know they're not able to have a, an open and honest conversation about it and I like to think that groups like Iowa Atheists and Freethinkers can point folks to good resources that don't entrench those negative taboos. Because too often I, I've seen folks who say, you know, hey, you know, I'm just curious about the sex thing. I don't know X, Y, or Z. I'm having an open relationship, a polyamorous, I'm gay, I'm, I'm bi, whatever. And then they get pushed to like a religious organization that mm. kind of makes them feel bad about it. They want to help them, but it's framed in a way that they're still broken. And it's important to t teach people that you're not broken. You just have a different outlook on things and we can talk about it. You don't need a religious point of view to improve or to not just improve as if you're bad, but improve the quality of your life so that you can accept who you are. I a hundred percent agree, yeah. man. Um, and going back to the porn addiction, um, I, I so <laughs> against my better judgment, I did actually attend an SAA meeting. Oh, okay. Um, and, I, I really came away from it just not and I think we talked about this a little bit the last time you were on but um, the entire approach to AA um, I think especially with something like porn or sex addiction um, there's just there's just such a brutal irony to it in a way because they they you know because it's a shameful act right like they mm -hmm. they've already established all these exactly. things mm -hmm. as shameful and then they're going to bring you in they're going to be like, we're going to help you but if you do this you're also still a shameful person exactly et cetera, et cetera. that's exactly what i mean yeah and it's such a and as an atheist who has struggled with porn addiction that's been a very frustrating thing yeah um battling that whole religion like reaching out to someone and being like okay no i'm an atheist i don't that's that talk is going to help me yeah. you know what i mean 
So uh, there's actually there's a resource for that. Um, oh, okay. that, that that is a secular one. His um, I forget the name of his organization. I'll shoot, but his name is Dr. Daryl Ray. D a r r e l l r a y, okay. and he's a uh, sex sexologist or so maybe a sociologist that like focuses on this. And I know he has books about this specifically wow. because of okay. the negative um, connotations with SAA and the shame that many folks felt about sex and sexuality. There are resources out there. Um, uh, Dar- I would just Google that, Doctor Daryl Ray. Um, I think Freedom from Religion Foundation has a link to his resources as well. If you hit up their website, okay. So there, there are things out there where you're not yes. baking in the, the shame that, that you see a lot in a lot of these other groups. Yeah. Yeah. And it, we need more of that for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and there's some podcasts I listen to and, and <laughs> those were a doozy to fucking filter through. Like you, you pull up <laughs> yeah. 10 podcasts and like all of them are, you, know, <laughs> you can't yeah. listen to any of these fucking things. You yeah. Know? <laughs> yeah. No, that's, that's, it's funny you mentioned that just like a side tangent. That is kind of a, a problem that a lot of folks are having when it comes to podcasts or, or YouTube channels is they'll, they'll find self help stuff or things about a topic, you know, sex addiction, uh, sure. Cannabis addiction alcohol addiction whatever it may be oh my oh are we not recording oh no we're recording yeah. on that one okay okay, <laughs> okay we're good Woo! okay um, see sorry keep going man but uh they they um folks will want to have self-help or just you know be entertained or whatever and they'll find that the people who are doing it are like religious on like the sly like they'll they'll have the jokes and the fun and stuff like that and they'll say so you know if you want to find more resources go to this website and it's mm. and it's a church you, you know so yeah. there is kind of a movement in the uh, secular community to just be like hey we don't have to kick them off. Like we can give an alternative that doesn't have those baked in shame assumptions. And it's been pretty successful. That's awesome. That's okay. awesome. Um, cause you know, that's also kind of, uh, a thing that I've kind of feared in like, cause I, I'd be curious to see how many people in the atheist community. And again, I know this is kind of pandering to what we were just talking about, but like, um, like how many of them would view that as a problem? You know, what do you mean? This? Like porn and sex addiction. Oh, like if they would view it as a serious problem or not. Um, I mean, I, I can't speak for every atheist. Um, exactly. Yeah. Right. I, I mean, I I don't see I, I don't see it come up as much as I see like alcohol addiction or drug addiction. Right. So I, sure. I, I would say it's probably not as as big a thing. But I think if you ask an atheist or a humanist, is like, is your quality of life poor because of this thing, whatever it is? And if the answer is yes, well, you're a human, so we should work to make it better. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. I, I think you can get an addiction to anything. Mm-hmm. I think anything can have a both positive or negative effect on your life. Sure. So hell yeah, man. Um, so let me ask you this. Uh, so this is, I don't really know how to start this. <laughs> So, okay, so you're going to hate this. Uh, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, so in the last, like, month, I've recently um, become an anarchist. Okay. Um, and I guess how I view that is just um, I, I view government as something that I, I don't even know why I'm staring at this way. But, <laughs> like, government's kind of something out of my control mm. right, in my mind. Um, so like what I, you know, as being an anarchist, like my focus has been, I'm going to focus on me, my family, what's around me, my community around me. Like that's more so where it's come. I guess here's my point. There will be the anarchist side. Like, let's take the extreme anarchist, right? And you were, if you were to ask them, okay, where do you find morality? A lot of them would say religion. Hmm. Um, and I think if you went over to the other side of the aisle on more of the atheist spectrum, they would say, Oh, well, I guess I don't know what they was. I guess what? I guess that's my question. What? Um, what would you say? Like, what? What gives you that sense of morality? I guess. So, I mean, so I, I'm a little troubled that atheism is juxtaposed with anarchy. Okay. Um, because I mean, my understanding of anarchy, and I mean, if I'm wrong, please, please tell me. Sure. Um, is you know, like you said, the complete destruction of hierarchy. <laughs> really, like, not necessarily destruction of all society. But destruction of hierarchy, meaning nobody's going to come and tell you what you can do with your car or your fence or whatever. You know what I mean? Like that. But also an anarchist doesn't mean no government. It just means no hierarchy. So is, am, I, am I incorrect on that? Um, I don't think you're incorrect. I mean, if, so my understanding is just like, I, I guess how I look at it is like we're in my like we're in our house, right? Mm-hmm. Like there's a natural hierarchy here. Like I own the house. You know, if you do something I don't like, I can ask you to leave, et cetera, et cetera, sure. et cetera. Um, so I don't I don't view it as getting rid of hierarchies. I just think mm-hmm. I view it more as 
and you, we debated on this last time, uh, kind of leaving it to capital, right? Like mm. the hierarchy okay. is more in terms of you know whose property you on, you know whose okay. business are you in, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so that I don't, sense. I don't view it. I know there is probably a branch of anarchism that, I, in my opinion, I think the whole thing has kind of been conflated with that. Um, I do think you find a lot of people who are anarchists who are actually very peaceful people and who actually yeah. they don't want to see the destruction of man. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Anarchy doesn't mean violent. I, I don't. I don't yeah, think. Yeah. 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 Um, so like anarcho capitalism, kind of. Sure. Okay. Sure. Yeah. So, um, I mean, yeah, there can be an atheist, anarcho capitalist, and not. So, sure, sure. When when you say how, where do you get morality from? That's that's a very complicated question when you when you juxtapose them because I don't think religion is a source of morality. I think religion co opts the morality that we come up with on our own based on what works, and mm-hmm. then they codify it and, and add the supernatural to it. Like, for example, um, to quote Christopher Hitchens, if if I could or paraphrase sure. him, yeah. um, you know, do you think pe- do you think the people that went to Mount Sinai when they were you know when Moses handed down the tablets, do you think they would have ever got there if they thought killing and stealing was okay no they would have already destroyed themselves decades ago yeah. so clearly there was some kind of morality before religion so when you, when you say does morality come from religion i think no no morality comes yeah. from us so i think we agree on that yeah yeah definitely, definitely. yeah so with, when it comes to the anarcho-capitalism or the anarchist anarchism it depends on what you find to be more important you know is is it more important that your capitalist rights are respected or is it more important that everybody is fed you know that's that's kind of sure where it comes from because i think in anarcho-capitalism the answer to that is no <laughs> yeah know? yeah yeah I, I mean you know i disagree i guess my point is um so so you think morality is innate which i agree or do you mm-hmm. not it's it's not innate in the sense that we already ahead of time know everything what is or is not moral but it, it's it's something that is generated in our brains that we see through our senses and can measure and see the results of. It's not like innate, like bees know how to automatically build a, build a hive. Sure, sure, But sure. it's innate in that we don't need any external supernatural forces to figure out what is or is not moral. Sure, so through evolution, perhaps. Yeah, evolution, okay. science, testing, think, philosophy, yeah. Okay, so yeah, I mean, you and I agree on that point. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, guess, I guess, let me ask you this then. Where do you think... Um, do you think government is, do you think government is in a sense the same, like, does it play the same role as religion? I mean, maybe mm. not the same role, but like, I'm trying to word this right. Does it work the same way? In a, like, cause you, cause as you said, you know, people attribute religion to be morality. Do people do the same with government? I guess that's Ooh. ultimately my question. That's it's so Eight tough. minutes later. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's so tough because it depends obviously what kind of government you have sure. and what, what, what you consider to be the best kinds of government as far as the bench, best interests of, of people, right? Mm-hmm. Because some folks, especially before, you know, constitutions, they, they viewed government as just who has the biggest stick, right? And you do what you can to maybe get yourself on the right the right side of those yeah. folks instead of the wrong side, yeah, you, you yeah. know? Um, but if you care about things like democracy because you think having everybody being able to participate in the government is better than not being able to participate in the government. Well, I think that's going to change some of your fundamental assumptions about it. Sure. Um, maybe you view it probably more positively in that view versus if you're like, you look at your government and it's just whatever the King says and you can't change what the King says because God said, uh, well, you're probably not going to have one, the freedom to question the government much, yep. but two, if you did, you probably wouldn't think much of it. So it's, it's it depends on the government. Now, if, in the context of your question, do you mean like our government, like in a representative democracy? Sure. Let's start with that. Because <laughs> if, if you, because <laughs> I, I think it, it does, it matters um, how how important you feel democracy is to the well being of individuals. Um, and really, I, I think ultimately, fundamentally, is how equal do you think humans are? Um, because if you don't think demo- representative democracy is good, you think some people should have less rights than others then you're not really all in on humans being equal because somebody's got to be on the lower end of that spectrum and somebody's going to be on the higher end with more rights. Sure. Uh, so if you believe that, then you probably don't really believe in representative democracy and it's not going to work for you. Sure. Um, but <laughs> let me counter that. Sure. Uh, w- what a, I'm blamed. I'm the, fu- the fucking dog threw me off. <laughs> um, you, you really, do you really, I mean, okay. So the whole thing with people being equal, um, on a moral, humane level, are people equal? Like, is anybody like, 
less than someone else and like should i treat you less because of something like no i don't believe that okay. do i think people have different positioning in society in terms of their skills or opportunities or whatever i 100 percent sure. believe that sure um so i i guess that's kind of i don't know I don't even know what. <laughs> no, no. I mean, I think that that's actually a pretty, that's a big argument, actually. That's a, okay. one of the biggest arguments of probably one of the major political parties in our country right now is that sure. argument. Sure. Is because you have less skills or um, education or wealth or whatever they is decided, they would say you should get less voice in government. Mm. And I, I would reject that because I can say, sure, you have lesser status, say, you know, you're not as good at whatever it is i am so maybe i could earn more but when it comes to government we should be equal because government because if we're unequal in government then what's to say we're unequal tomorrow and i'm on the lower end you know sure yeah sure i mean look i think at the end of the day um people like like we've said people should treat each other with respect, with respect. um i mean despite me not believing in democracy i at least believe that minimum like if i see people on the street i'm not gonna be shitty to them because of xyz i'm yeah. gonna treat them with respect um etc so I, I mean i think i think that is the i think that's what leads to democracy though <laughs> to, to your point i, I think sure. that's why it came about because yeah. folks are like yeah i want to stay in my own house or my own cave whatever it may be sure and i don't sure. want anybody to mess with it or mess with my my wife or my my stuff or all that sure and then people over time you know, found out that it worked out but they were best left alone when they treated everybody equally under the you know whoever the council or whatever because there was democracy way before there were you know like kings because people had to be share <laughs> they had to share they recognize that if they shared and gave up a little bit of their autonomy a little bit they actually lived longer had healthier lives had longer lives and had people to sure. rely on so to your point i think that is one of those innate things where you see other people as equal to yourself at sure. you know, on some level sure so that leads to democracy because you want to be treated that way too sure but i guess with the democracy isn't there still something being enforced yeah in a sense yeah um yeah i i guess that's kind of where i disagree the most um you know people who are pro-government is i i god damn it wasn't me. <laughs> i've been telling these in so long man. uh my my oh my god i'm fucking blanking I'm fucking blanking. I mean, I'm so sorry. Man. No, it's okay. I, <laughs> you're, you're the thing you're saying are, are there are things I've heard before. You, yeah. you know, they're not they're not like blank or, or crazy or, or bad. Yeah. Um. It, it's just um. And, and when I say it leads to democracy, that doesn't mean like oh, you secretly like democracy. No, it just I think that line of thinking is what led to it. Now, yeah. if we were in a vacuum, right, and we were all in our houses and they we just popped into it, then I think there, your argument is a lot more compelling right sure but i think history shows us that if we all adopted you um, anarchism or what you say and say i forget the government well then that's how you get warlords you know that's how you get bandits so even though we all may be chill and cool sure. all it takes is one dickhead you, you know yeah. to come and, and screw it up and now all of a sudden we find ourselves banding together to fight off this dickhead yeah and there goes our uh, there goes our enforcement you know are we going to be enforced by the warlord or are we going to be enforced by at least this thing we can maybe vote on once in a while you know i, I I do agree with that assertion, and uh, you know, d despite my status, I do think that government is inevitable. Like, sure. there is always going to be <clears throat> people who are going to get together. Um, there's a great quote: uh, a mo "You know, most people would rather be when it comes to like most people don't want to be free; they want to be safe." That's fair to some yeah. to some degree. So, you know, I think uh, I, I think with that, with all that, it's important to keep that in mind. When it comes to um you know where we're all at i mean i think world. i i you know we live in the united states i think almost yeah. uh, a good 80 percent of our problems are because of that you know folks would rather feel safe than be free yeah. in in the sense that they would rather feel safe rather than actually you know be safe <laughs> no i 100 i 100 percent agree man i 100 percent agree um you brought me in here as the president of my iaf are I, you the president now i now yeah i wasn't last time i talked yeah i think yeah. you were the um it's true press Press yeah, also. you're right. Yeah, I'm, hey, that's awesome. Right. Yeah, congrats, congrats. Um, you wanted me to give you the atheist perspective on it is I find the theist accounts for this not as nonsensical. Um, mm. I don't think you can believe in a Abrahamic God and also that we have free will because he made everything in predetermined. It even says it in the Bible. 
that, you know, God knew you before you were even born. And, you know, who are you to change even one hair on your head or, you know, all those things. So that's interesting. I, I think if you if you want to come at me, bro, with the free will thing as an atheist I, and you were and if you were a theist, I think I actually have a little bit better <laughs> argument than the theist yeah. does because I can sit here and speculate about all the stuff we just talked about. You don't hear me interjecting a supreme being that can control and has already controlled yeah. what is going to happen. So. I, I think again, theist has a lot of work to do <laughs> to even get to the the table on some of these, and, it, and it's not because they're stupid or anything. I just think sure. I think those arguments are just not very good. Uh, they're not yeah. they're not equipped to handle what I would consider to be reality because they require something outside of reality to, to explain everything, which make which I think disqualifies them from really being seriously discussed discussed in that way. Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, I I didn't finish it, but I was reading this book. Uh, <clears throat> um, I think it was. I think it was called atheist something with atheist spirituality. Mm, it's, um, those. it's interesting. Uh, the guy like he, he pulls a lot of like the Buddhist Eastern mm. values, which I, I do actually find a lot of yeah. uh, great stuff from that. But um, uh, kind of the point with that. God, fucking damn it, dude. What were we just talking about? I'm so <laughs> free, free will I, and uh, I'm not even stoned or anything. Uh, man. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> free will and uh, I guess atheism and secularism. Oh sure. Um, God, fuck. I'm so sorry, dude. I'm fucking. <laughs> I'm I'm on a uh, fuck, dude. I'm bombing right now, dude. I'm fucking bombing. <laughs> I haven't bombed this hard. God damn, had a weird day. Um, but you know, I mean, I I agree with you ultimately. I think I uh, like I think there's a point where we don't have control. Sure. Like like we we live somewhere we. We have these certain abilities, et cetera, and that keeps us in. But I always tend to think that if we have the choice of A, B, C, like I'm still able to make that choice of A, B, and C. And it, like, like with the example with the water. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, like we agree on that, yeah. but that's always kind of something. Uh, that's always kind of an interesting thing. It um, is, yeah. You know. Oh, you know, I remember my point. So, um, so you know, religion, and this is kind of tangenting into a different point, maybe, but. Like religion, a lot of times is a way for people to accept death. Yes. So I, you know, I think it, I, I, I guess I was just to your point earlier. I think when people kind of think in these terms, like it does, in a sense, kind of disqualify them in a way. Like it, it sounds shitty to say, but like if if your entire worldview is going to be based around that, I'm going to have a harder time taking you seriously. I think you so know. in some in some ways. Sure. I mean, to to say that is disqualifying. It is strong language, right? To say that it is sure. disqualified. True, true. Because I mean, there are a true. lot of religious scholars and and philosophers and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Yeah. But I, I think, and I mean, this is just my point of view. And anecdotally, I, I think it's interesting that a lot of the times the most uh, famous or best religious scholars use secular arguments to try to make religion makes sense because they know i mean and, and realistically they know if we're having a discussion about free will as soon as they say god did it you're 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 done yeah you, you know I, i've described i used this a lot the drake thing was pretty fun so imagine we had um and stop me if i told you this example we had this whole uh equation that explained everything in the universe just this long beautiful equation takes up five rooms whatever and at the very end you put plus god at the end right <laughs> say because god did it right imagine because i mean we don't have to imagine because kind of what a lot of them do right yeah <laughs> but if you just if you have that equation and you just like erase god off the end does the equation still work and the answer is yes generally right mm -hmm. but if you took that god and I, I always say it's adding zero right you're adding a plus <laughs> zero plus god so because it doesn't do anything but if you yeah. add that zero anywhere else in that equation it wrecks it it stops it Mm. It stops the equation because now you have a plus zero in the middle that, you know, you might have had a minus sign there before or a divide sign or a square root. But now you added a plus zero, you blew it up because God is the argument terminator. It stops being explainable when you have to appeal to God. And I think a lot of religious scholars know that, which is why yeah. there's religious scholarly scholars in the first place. It's all, I think, dancing around that point to try to make it make sense. So when we're having tough discussions about free will, government, all this stuff, if they say, well, it's God. Well, we're done. You, we're, you, you can't really be at the same substantive table as the other arguments because they have evidence and you just have God. Yeah. You're in, you, you're at a different table, you know, in my, in my view. So that, that's why it's, it's tough for me to take it as, as intellectually as seriously as, as other secular arguments, arguments. I agree. Yeah. 
Let me ask you this: as the as the president of the Iowa Atheists <laughs> and Free Thinkers, uh, how do you deal with all this? Like, how do you like, you know, because like we were just saying, I'm sure a lot of people come up to you and you kind of you kind of have to take their argument at face value. You kind of like, you know, I really don't want to get into this maybe but you kind of you know you want to also be able to give your viewpoint and engage with them in a way you know i don't know how do you deal with that i mean i just need to be myself i I mean just like we've been talking here i I find and and this applies to just about anything whether it's politics sports whatever is you know if you just have an honest discussion and are willing to entertain different ideas for you know (laughs) Not forever, but for a little bit and hear somebody out, you're going to get a hell of a lot farther than if you just kick in the door and say, I'm right. And when I, when I have these events where I'm sitting there in public or standing in public, excuse me, a lot of folks take it as like a challenge. Like, oh, oh, oh the atheists are going to be <laughs> all up in here and think they can exist, you know? And so, you know, you, you kind of know, you kind of know you're going to get those discussions. But I, I, I like the Socratic method. I just like asking questions, you know, like, what do you mean by that? You know, why do you believe that? And how, why does that make sense more than this other explanation? And a lot of times you get folks who, and I'm not saying I'm going to deconvert them, but I, I, I think a lot of times people have never really thought about some of these things at all because yeah. they haven't had to. And I get it. You, you know, that's fine. It's a luxury a lot of times to be able to think about these things. But putting a face to the atheism and being willing to engage with folks in a rational, reasonable, polite way does some good. Uh, so I, I, I welcome the challenge and I, I enjoy doing it. Yeah. I agree. I agree. And, uh, and again, again, I don't want to generalize, but a, a lot of atheists that I've met, um, it is kind of disappointing in a sense. I think uh, Anthony Jessen like actually put it really well. <clears throat> he was like, you know, because like, okay, let's say there's Grandma Betty. Grandma Betty believes in God, and you spend four hours berating Grandma <laughs> Betty, and you've convinced her that there's no God. And like, isn't necessarily like she's crushed at the end of it, right? Yeah. Like, there's there's a certain point where you kind of have to let things be as they may sure, right yeah. you don't need to you don't need to necessarily charge at the world with a spear and be like i'm gonna take down religion i'm gonna take down every single motherfucker who believes yeah. in God. It's, <laughs> it's such a it's such a futile thing too i feel like i mean i've i've done that before on accident i, I oh, made wow. somebody cry uh like seriously <laughs> oh, yeah shit. no and i'm not like i'm not bragging about it i felt yeah. i felt and still feel really bad about it uh me and some some friends were we were just talking about religion and my my friend was actually he was just bashing on they were Catholic and just okay. bashing on the church and this and that and I mean they, and I was nothing he said was really untrue I mean, my, <laughs> like it was like they didn't know. and they were just like I can't believe this other person was just like I can't believe you're saying that you know like I've went I've been a part of the Catholic Church since I was like you know, four you, you know this is like my entire life and to hear you guys who I consider friends to just crap all over this thing is you know it's hurtful. Um, but then my, my shoot is probably more my friend than me. Now I think about it. Uh, my friend was just like, yeah, but what about this, this, and this, those aren't true. Like, I'm, I know I appreciate that, but they're not true. Those are lies that like, whatever is, is not true. And they, they got really upset because they, they said like, I, I agree with you that that is probably not true, but I cannot accept that my entire 30 years or whatever is a lie. And it got, they got really upset and they left and, and they were crying and they had to be comforted because they genuinely were upset that her friends were bashing this thing that was so important to her and that she couldn't square it. She couldn't write us off as, you know, idiots who hated her or her religion. Sure, sure. We, we were her friends who were being really, looking back, we were being pretty mean to the church and they associated themselves with that church closely. So to Aunt Betty, I, I think you said, <laughs> yes, you're, you're right. But I can give you a counterpoint. Sure. No, go for <laughs> um, it. Go for it. Um, I think there is value in discussing these things because I think it, I think, and I may be subjective, audience may disagree. I think it's better to believe more things that are true and have evidence than things that are not true and don't have evidence. You make better decisions. You have better outcomes. You have better lives when you do things that have evidence versus not. And that starts with challenging preconceived notions about religion, about whether God is real or whether it's even good to believe in a God or whether that God even makes sense. So even though it might crush Aunt Betty, if there were more crush Aunt Bettys who were sad and and less proud theist Aunt Bettys who voted for abortion bans or yeah. voted against gay people, as sad as it may be to have crushed Aunt Bettys, the world would literally be a better place. That's a fair argument. Let me ask, I guess let me ask you this. Do you, and 
again. I think the whole podcast has just been me asking <laughs> questions in a weird way. But um, do you think that there is any kind of end? I mean, not even end, but do you think that there is a future where religion is minimized, where society as a whole is atheistic minded? Because, I mean, I mean, you and I can both acknowledge the odds are stacked against us, right? Like yeah. we're the minority for sure. Um, I don't know. Do you see a future of that? Um, oof, no. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I, I think it, religious views and ideas make sense in this, in the, in the sense that like, Oh, I mean, just imagine we lived in Iowa in 1100 AD and you saw a freaking tornado. Yeah. <laughs> Right? <laughs> Holy crap, the spirit the wind spirits are pissed at us. They are going to wreck our shit. <laughs> yeah, you know? Exactly. You know, exactly. imagine being, you know, in three hundred BC in Persia and seeing a full lunar eclipse or solar eclipse. How how earth shattering that would be for you. You're you would literally think the world is in it. And <laughs> why wouldn't you? You the sun yeah. literally is blotted out of the sky. So to to create these ideas and assign spirits to them. I get that. That's a human thing because sure. we want to humanize everything so we can better understand it. We can understand lightning better if it's Thor or Zeus than if, you know, negative and positive electrons, right? You know? mm -hmm. So will we ever be rid of religious ideas and spiritualism? No. I, I think that's part of being able to think. Will we be able to drop religion as we know it now, like the monotheistic uh, or, or sometimes pantheistic ideas? I, I could see a world where, the, where those go away, but do I think it'll happen? No, because we have as a species ceded far too much power and resources to them mm. that I think, I mean, I, you, you know my views. Like I, I think probably the biggest threat to the United States and democracy and liberties are Christian nationalists here. And every time those folks get into power, you have less ability to question these things. And I, I can see a Handmaid's Tale type scenario where a lot of the places where uh, where there was free thought and things are literally shut down or they just kill them. Because mm -hmm. it's more important for the religious folks to maintain power than it is for them to maintain and find truth. I mean, look, look at Iran. You know, Iran is what happens when, you know, in that case, Muslim nationalists take over the government, you know, when when their version of Republicans, in my view, <laughs> when they sure. took over the government. And what's the first thing they did? You know, they they killed the, the journalists and the professors. They got rid of all of all, all of those institutions and made them all religious institutions so that, yeah, you can still have your philosophy department and you can still have your economic department. But you have to have the blessing of the imams now instead sure. of the science and the data. And so those people were either killed, jailed or driven away. And that's that's what happens with religion. And you would like to think that we as a species and as a country and as a society are willing to recognize that and stand against it. But time and again, we're seeing that we're just not, we're sure. just not able to. Yeah. Sure. Let me ask you this though. Do you wonder if, <clears throat> do you wonder how much of that is religion and more so how much of it is just human nature? Mm. Cause I think that's kind of, when you look at, you know, religious governments or non-religious governments, um, you know, there's, examples on both sides that are bad um i think the thing that it correlates those two is just the the evilness of not even evilness but the badness of human nature right like the the greed that people have like just the this this complicated thing that we don't we can't really pinpoint at this time of you know where we're at but we do know that there's just you know people are inclined to be selfish or greedy and there are some people who are more inclined to do that than others um I don't know. Do you see what I'm saying in that? Like, yeah. do you wonder if maybe it's just more of a a vessel to get to that point versus it actually being the problem? I mean, I think the entire human civilization is that battle, is, is the battle of the many who are less selfish and less greedy against the few that are. Sure. Um, sure. I, I, I think, yeah, that's, that's just kind of how it's been. So there's some human nature there. I, I think when, when we set that aside best is how you get, representative democracies, right? Those are the places that stick around for a long time because they're not eating their own tail, you know, mm -hmm. all, all the time. So there's, there's that human nature, but there's just as much human nature to be, you know, benevolent and empathetic and, and all that. Yes. It, it's just, which, which side are we going to reward? And I, and I think our current economic system and 
that and many others do not reward that. And so you get what you get based out of that system. Okay. Yeah. Let me ask you this. In, in your kind of piggybacking all this, um, in your opinion, what do you think the legal status of religion should be? Oh. <laughs> should it be illegal? Should it be kept legal? What do you think? No, I don't think there's, I don't think there's any way you can police people's thoughts in a yeah. way that's, that's, that's in any way uh, useful. Um, I think the legal, I mean, religion shouldn't be illegal, but I, I think, you know, right now in, in the United States, the separation of church and state is really important. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, every time religious groups and ideals have sought additional legal protections, it has been used to circumvent laws. You know, uh, you, a lot of people don't know this. The Southern Baptist denomination only exists because they didn't want to go to school with black people. That's literally oh. why they split is oh, over wow. segregation. Damn. So and they're like, oh, well, we're a religious school, so we can just only have white people, mm. in, you know. So and the, the com to combat that, it's like if you get federal dollars, which everybody has to pay into, well, then you have to allow black people because everybody's equal under the government. I think that's a good place to be uh, and, and when it comes to legal st status. And I think that should extend to just about everything with churches. With Iowa atheists and free thinkers, we open our books. You know, if you, somebody really wanted to, they can go and see where all of our dollars are spent. We don't have a ton of money. But if I wanted to do the same thing to like Hope Lutheran, I can't. Yeah. I can't. And why? You know, why Why are they able to go and buy a cool new projector and write it off as a tax thing? <laughs> but I can't because I'm not a church, you, you know? Yeah. And, or if I do, I can show you. You know, if, if they were to pay me a salary from Iowa Atheists and Freethinkers, it would be public. You can go look it up just like you can with Planned Parenthood or the Red Cross. But I can't do that for the, the local uh, Walnut Creek, you know, because they, do, they have legal protection. Sure. And, Again, to circumvent the laws. So I think legally they should be taxed and treated the same as any other nonprofit. Sure. Um, but, so obviously I don't believe in taxes, but <laughs> I, uh, I, I have always criticized that point. Like I do think despite, again, the fact I don't believe that, I do think it's bullshit that everyone else pays taxes. <laughs> Except for them. <laughs> yeah. <don't>, yeah. <laughs> that is fucking bullshit. I will always, I always back that up. Um, Okay, last question. Uh, would you ever be open to a religious debate oh, on yeah. the show? Sure, why not? Yeah, I'll bring it on. I'm happy to do it. That's why okay. I, I do the things I do. I think if you're not able to defend your position or articulate your position, then you probably shouldn't have it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree with that, man. Awesome, awesome. Well, you know, I've I've always had trouble of uh, finding, like, I shouldn't say, like, like religious leaders per se or people that are like you know like your position right like i i've had a hard have had a hard time with that but i have i do have other people that are very knowledgeable in religion so that might be something that happens in the future um jason before we wrap this up uh why, why don't you tell us a little bit about uh what your organization has been doing lately and sure. uh some of the what what you've been doing what's coming up all that yeah yeah so right now um as you know the the legislature is in session and they are passing a lot of laws that are based on religion um and these are laws that are specifically designed to take away the rights of certain minority individuals in our in our state okay in particular um a lot of these laws that have been floated not all of them have been passed but just to give you an idea of some of the things that we've been raising awareness on um they were looking to ban satanism in public spaces oh. they were literally going to say the state of iowa is going to criminalize being a specific religion oh my can God. you think of anything that's a more blatant violation <laughs> of equal rights and equal yeah. protections you, you know we might as well ban people with blonde hair you know it's ridiculous yeah um and it, it didn't get through the funnel but i mean the fact that somebody felt comfortable enough to to put that forward other laws that have come through though um you know they they want to uh they wanted to try to put chaplains in school if that didn't pass but other things do like, what Oh, you didn't hear about this one? Um, they wanted to put chaplains in schools. What's as a chaplain? A cha well, that, it's a broad term. Okay. But <laughs> usually it's somebody excuse me, who's like a, an advisor or like a, a counselor. Oh, okay. But they're, excuse me, they're religious. And the thing about it is they explicitly uh, and specifically do not have to be accredited or anything like that. They can just be. A oh, chaplain. my God. So, yeah, you, you could go and be a chaplain of the Church of Coleman if you wanted to. And they have no <laughs> legal right to tell you no under that if that law had passed. Um, but the other things that, that they are that they are doing is you know attacking trans people, saying that mm -hmm. you need to be publicly outed if you're trans, put it on your government documents, yeah, it's up. stuff like that. The the Religious Freedom Restoration Act type laws, which basically say if somebody chooses to do anything under um, and use a religion as a as an excuse, then they can't be like held accountable or liable for it is what, what they're wanting to do. Um, so if I want to discriminate against you and I say, oh, I just don't want to give him you know, sell him anything because my Christian belief doesn't think people with glasses should have it. 
I mean, that's it. Sound you laugh, but this yeah. is literally what they are doing and have done in other states. So it's pretty scary. So, so IAF is trying to raise awareness about these things because when they use religion to undermine rights, then nobody has them. You, you know, then then it's just sure. whatever whoever what whoever an authority says God tells them to do, they can do. That's not democracy. That's theocracy. We should stand against that. Um, other things, uh, we have a showing uh, I'm putting together of a book, uh, a book, a movie <laughs> called Satan's Guide to the Bible. You'd like this. Uh, hmm. It's it's a scholarly look at the Bible as told by a Sunday school teacher who is Satan. <laughs> and it, it's funny, but a, a lot of folks are like, oh, it's just it's a silly. It's actually not. They have scholars on there, like actual like Dr. Hector Avalos, Bart Ehrman, and some others on there who say, yeah, if you read the Bible, it says this, and here's the historical documents. And then it cuts to the Satan thing, and it's funny and stuff. And then they go to the scholar. It's actually a documentary. It's very informative and very wow. good. Huh. Um, and the, the premise is a lot of the pastors and priests, they go to seminary, and they learn this stuff about the contradictions and stuff. But then they don't tell the public because the public would not probably not like it very much. They would probably not go to church. They would have more questions. So they, sure. they know it, but they don't share with the public. So we're trying to bring that up. That's going to be, and I'm shooting for the central library. So stay tuned for that. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, I really want to have it at the varsity cinema. So we'll see if that, Ooh, if that goes down. That's a nice cinema. It, it, yeah. It looks really nice. Yeah. They really redid it. Like it, it looks like a fucking brand new place. Yeah. I haven't been in there yet. I've seen the pictures oh, and okay. I want, but I, I want to go and check it out. Oh, yeah. um, and then, yeah, we have our, you know, our Sunday meetups every other Sunday, uh, farmer's market in the summer. We have the Iowa secular summit in J uh, June coming down where we're going to have some out of state speakers come and talk about church date separation. And uh, there's more. I'm probably going to put together some more presentations on atheism, similar to what we talked about today so that folks can learn about what's going on. Awesome. Well, Hey man, I appreciate yeah. you having or coming on. <laughs> God, I, I apologize for the bombs. God, <laughs> I have, not, I have not done a guest interview in a while, so to you and the audience, I apologize. Um, but yeah, we'll uh, the episode drops have been kind of irregular lately on this specific podcast, but um, we'll be here when we're here. Uh, we do game streams and stuff like that too. We're raising money for the um, the the superhero stoner comedy film where Kim Reynolds is the villain. Oh, wow. so that's what we're working on. Okay, uh, so we're <laughs> raising money for that. She's kind of the villain already outside of the movie too, so that works out exactly. <laughs> exactly social commentary <laughs> um so yeah check that out uh check out my other two podcasts on hinge uncensored every tuesday at 2 p.m and the guts and gore podcast every thursday at 2 p.m uh jason thanks again for coming through and uh we'll catch everybody next time all right thanks Peace. for having me